Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Tuesday the 11th of October 2016, and this is episode 197, Sick Kid Again. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How was your week? Mine was very busy. I had a birthday party on Sunday for Mara, wherein the entire guest list who had RSVP'd that they were going to attend then canceled. We had a lot of people saying they weren't going to come, but then everybody who had said they were going to come canceled the morning of the party. That was awesome. Um, luckily, Mara didn't realize the difference, but it made me feel like I was a horrible mom because nobody was showing up. We had a really good time anyway. It was fine. And it's not like we paid for a reservation anywhere. We just had it at a park, so it was fine. Um, I have my niece here. She is... She was sent home yesterday for being sick, but they have a 24-hour policy. So since she was sick in the afternoon, she couldn't go back to school today. So she's here. And uh, she has promised that she would be quiet while I was recording, and I'm going to hold her to it. But I also told her she could come say hi. So you want to come say hello? Yep. Okay, now go do something quiet, please. Thank okay. you. Um. So what else? A lot of work, a lot of cleaning, a lot of momming, and some crafting. So let's get to that. The Finisher Frog Craft Along started, and it is going pretty well. There are a few, um, a few entries in the finished objects, frogged objects thread. People have been pulling out old projects and ripping them out and pulling out old projects and finishing them. I don't think there has been a new start to finish project in there, but I could be incorrect. Um, but of course those are acceptable too. And all of that information is in the, um, is in the Ravelry group, which is Bunny Fish Crafts podcast. I never say what the Ravelry group is or anything, but if you're wanting that information and this is the first time you're catching me talk about it on the podcast and you haven't watched all the way to the end, there's a credit screen at the end that has contact information and stuff. So let's see. Um, works in progress. I have several, nothing new. Oh, you know what? I do have something that is not actually new. I've been working on it for a while, but I'm pretty sure I've never shown it on the podcast before. So it is this very small cross stitch. I started it when Melissa visited me and um, it's just a little dog. And it is, who is this? What is this company? Janelin. This is the size of the pattern, so that's on the back of the sheet. And it's just supposed to be a really small thing. It came with little hoops. There were three of these size cross stitch things in the packet that I bought. Patterns? Kits? Kits, yes. In the pack that I bought and um, they come with little hoops that you can then mount them in. I gave one to Melissa when she was visiting and I started this at the same time because I was showing her how to cross stitch. My hair is crazy this morning. Oh well. Um, so I have the dog completely stitched. So he's completely stitched. I have to back stitch around the exterior and then around the outside are dots. In the original pattern, the dots around the outside are green and this collar was ecru, but I decided I wanted the dog's collar to be red and green and then I would do ecru around the outside so that the dots would look more like snowflakes so it would be more Christmassy. And everything else you've seen at some point before. So I worked on my Totoro mitts. I don't remember where I was last week, probably down in where it says Totoro. Here's the front. This is where the actual Totoro will be. And then this is the palm where it has these, oops, wrong way, adorable little dust bunny clusters, like soot sprites. Um, so I just started that and they're very few down by the bottom, but then they get more, um, more clustered as you go up the palm because dust bunnies fly in the air, duh. 
So that is this. I'm a little nervous about the fit because they're kind of tight. They can be kids. Uh, no, they're not going to be kids. They're for me. Dang. I will rip it out if I need to. They're kind of tight. And also the next round is where I'm supposed to put in for breaking the thumb. So if I pull this up on my wrist so that the ripping is right there. Yeah, I'm supposed to put in the thumb break right now. Uh, I feel like I should probably work a few more rounds and then put it back in. It's a little bit tight. I might see if I can si find my size fives and go up because my hand is very, very wide. I think I had this problem last time I made the mittens and I forgot, but ugh. And it's, it's nice. I want the mittens to be tight, but I don't want them to be so tight that I can't get them on and off. So this project might go on pause until I find my size five needles. I'm not positive about that. I might just make some adjustments to the pattern or something. Who knows? I could also try making my floats super, super loose, but the tension of the knitting and the tension of the floats is pretty good. So I think I just need to go up a needle size or add a couple stitches. I haven't decided yet. It's hard to tell. I can always add stitches down here, down here um, on my palm on this area and then decrease them out once I get up towards the fingers so that that's not too weird. We'll see what I decide by next week. The yarn that I'm using is Dreamcatcher Alpacas. It's local yarn to me, local-ish. It's local to my dad. He picked it up on his way to Gabriel's birthday party. I also worked on the Rhombus Socks by Cookie A, and I did about an inch. Um, the yarn is unknown, and there's little cable-y details in the socks. I'm about to do a cable round again, which makes the rhombus shape. Those are worked on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. I worked on cusp, and you guys, I'm such a fail. I did not finish the heels. This is like the third week where I've been like, oh, I can probably finish the heels by then. No, I'm still working on the heel flap. And I have, I don't know, probably another four rows back and forth before I throw in the heel turn. But cusp is a really beautiful pattern. It starts off with this lace panel that you can't see, but you can see in person. Um, lace on the back and it travels around the front of the foot and then it goes down um, onto the top of the foot. So it's a really pretty pattern by Cookie A. And this is where I was last week, right before the heel, right before the flap of the heel. It shouldn't take me an entire week to do two heel flaps, but it did. The yarn is gorgeous. It is hedgehog fibers in the monsoon colorway. And I'm working those on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. This is the Bad Nut Shawl by Josh Ricks. And I'm again in the middle of a short row section because the shawl is full of them. Uh, so I was here last week. And I did a few inches of knitting. You can see there are stockinette sections and garter stitch sections. There's some eyelets in there. I'm working away on it. It's going slow because shawls have so many round or so many stitches per row as compared to most socks. As compared to almost all the socks that I'm working on right now. I mean, it's, they, it has more rows than all of the socks, but I feel it more on some socks than others. The yarn that I'm using is Solar Flare Fibers in the Jet Lag Zombie colorway, and it's BFL. I know I'm going really fast today, but I've already talked about all of these projects, so it's kind of like a check-in video because I don't really have a ton to say this week. Sorry, guys. I also worked on my tube socks. And last week I was, for both socks, I was right around the beginning of the ribbing section. I think I was on red on one and dark blue on the other. I have started the second color repeat on both socks. 
and um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned last week that I was going to throw in increases when I started this repeat. So I did. I increased in every other knit two section. So every other knit two section is now a knit three. And um, my plan is over this color repeat to increase every color change, every stripe. So I, I did the main increase, the massive increase in the red, but then in the gray, I increased one more stitch on the next um, the next available knit two, I made that a knit three, and then just knit the rest as it was already set. So that way I'll be increasing one stitch per stripe, so it'll be increasing gradually over that calf area, because my calves are bigger than my ankles, but not, the, the increase is not rapid. It's a gradual thing. So these are the socks, and maybe I'll remember to put in stitch marker progress keepers so you can see my progress this coming week but probably not because I've been a fail about that um, and I think that's all of the main things that I've been working on yes so I also worked on Gabriel's Hexapuff which you haven't seen in a while but I added that third color I said it was a brown and it's kind of looking brown but it's actually called hunter green but it is really, really browny. Like it's kind of green. You can see that it has like a green tone to it, but it looks brown most of the time, depending on lighting. So this is, um, it's finished, except I need to find stuffing. I have some somewhere in the basement. So I can stuff it and then I will Kitchener it closed and then I will start knitting legs and a head off of it because he wanted a dragon and a tail. So my what I'm thinking is I will pick up stitches along this edge right here and knit a head off in this direction. Um, pick up stitches down on or like uh, by this corner and knit up for a tail and then knit legs, pick up stitches and knit legs off of here, and pick up stitches and knit legs off of here for the dragon. That is my thought. And um, all of the everything is going to be mismatched probably because I, I'm probably just going to pick up stitches and knit until I run out of the current ball of yarn and then attach a new ball of yarn and then continue on with that new ball of yarn for the next part and then knit until I run out of yarn and attach a new ball of yarn. So that's my thoughts right now. I don't know if that's how it's going to be. I might knit all of the pieces separate and then sew them on, but I really would rather pick up stitches for them. I don't know yet, but that's, that's what it looks like. It's a giant hex of puff. I don't think any of the kids have knit on it since the last time I showed you that they knit on it. I'm pretty sure it's been all me. I have also worked on the log cabin blanket. So where am I? I have not done a row or a ridge a day. This is what, six of them? Five of them. So I'm a little behind, but I'll pick it back up. It's really easy, um, really easy knitting. So I just need a moment where I need to have brainless knitting, I guess. I've also worked on the the um the quilt that I'm turning into a dog bed that has more stitching done but I mean it looks the same basically I have also worked on Steve's quilt and I did like two rows on the um dream bird shawl maybe four rows I don't know not very many but I was like oh I'll work on this a little and then I was like okay that's enough for me because anybody who has hung out with me in person knows that I like I can't just sit and work on something unless I'm doing something else. Like if I'm at a knit group, I can probably work on one project for an entire hour. If I'm sitting in a dark movie theater, I can work on that. I can work on one project for the entire movie because I can't switch projects because I can't look at it to see where I am on the project. So uh, those are pretty much the only ways that I get like a solid chunk of things done because I don't really sit down and watch programs. I do sit down and watch podcasts, but I get up frequently. There's a lot of pausing 
so I can go change laundry or go make food or go do whatever it is that I need to do. I don't just sit and work on things for a long time. But, you know, maybe next time I chat with my friends, I can make that my main project and knock out that first brown section. As long as I get the brown, the brown block finished by the 15th, I'll consider that good shape because that's halfway through the month and then I will be able to do the second block that I want to do in the second half of the month. Oh, hey, I wanted to say something about the, um, the tube socks. Guess who has the best sister? That would be me. She just called because she's running to Starbucks and wanted to know if I wanted anything. So of course I said yes, because even though I made coffee this morning, there's always room for a chai latte or frappuccino in my day. Always. Anyway, um, these socks. So normally I don't worry about making things match, but I was like, you know, I really kind of want those rainbow socks to be matchy. I say I don't care if things match, but the last couple pairs of stripy socks that I've made, I've been very, um, very precise in making sure they match. So I guess sometimes I care and sometimes I don't. This time I cared. So I started, I, I started the first one with the Croy non-rag shades, the, the gray marl. And I pulled out the first, the first gray bit until I got to a stripe and it was red. I was like, okay, I guess I'll start on red. And then I pulled out the second skein and I was like, well, I wonder where we are in the color progression. And it was in orange. And I was like, are these wound the same way or opposite? Because sometimes that's a problem. But they were wound the same way. So I just pulled out the orange and had the red for the next stripe. So that's really cool that there's not a lot of yarn wasted. And obviously it's not wasted. I will make a hexi puff or something out of it. Probably a hexi puff. I'm, I'm going to cast on hexi puffs today because I haven't made any in weeks, including this week. None were made. So casting on hexi puffs probably immediately after I finish recording this because, um, I'm going to enjoy my Starbucks and Cecilia and I are going to watch Footloose. So I'm going to work on the log cabin blanket too, because I just said that right. Next time I was sitting for a long period of time, it's going to be with Squishfish and we are going to watch Footloose. So on to modular knitting. I'm pretty sure that's where we're at in the podcast. I get very distracted when things interrupt my recording. I am working currently on square number 91, barn raising square 91. I just have to finish this round, um, right? Yeah, I just have to knit this round in this blue color and then the next round will be one round knit in black and then bind off in black. So I'm almost finished, it's, I'm counting it as finished, you won't see it next week. This is yarn from Christina and I also made a mitered square out of that same yarn. It is right here. It's really, really pretty. I feel like I've seen this colorway before, but I don't know where. It's really pretty though. And I might have enough to make a hexapath. Who knows? Um, yeah, modular knitting is done. So all I have left is reading. It's a really short podcast this week. Sorry guys. Uh, everything's just really, really hectic. And I just feel really hectic. And actually, I feel like it's almost time to take a nap. And if I'm going to take one, I have to take one soon. So maybe I'll nap while Footloose is on. Probably not, though. Probably no nap for me today. Anyway, reading this week, I finished Shalador's Lady, which was the book that I had started last week. And it was really, really good, really easy to pick up and put down as needed because there are not so much at the beginning. At the beginning, the chapters were longer, but towards the end, the chapters got shorter, which made it easy to, you know, pick up, read a chapter, go do whatever I had to do. Very, very enjoyable. Still highly recommend the series. Recommend it so much, in fact, that instead of taking a break from reading a book in the series, I picked up the very last one. 
which is Twilight's Dawn, or it's the last one to my knowledge. If there are more, please let me know. So this is Twilight's Dawn by Anne Bishop, and it is four short stories. I am in the first one. I started reading it last night. I'm only on page 58, and it is Winsol, which is basically Christmas. And, um, and they're getting ready for the celebration. So that's what's going on there. And it takes place after, this story takes place after Tangled Webs. Um, I think before or during the um, Shalador's Lady. Not positive because they haven't mentioned any of the main characters from Shalador's Lady, but it definitely takes place after Tangled Webs like immediately after. And I kind of don't want to read it because um, Amanda totally does not come with spoiler warnings and she told me what happened in one of the stories. And I don't want to know that information, but I'm going to read it so that I can be finished with the series and then I have to figure out what to read next. But in exciting news, I will soon, hopefully, have a library card because did you know you could apply for a replacement social card online? That's crazy. I thought for sure I was going to have to go into an office. So I was looking up the information to go to an office and um, because I finally got my birth certificate. I think I told you guys all this, that I had lost that stuff in the move. So I finally had my birth certificate replaced and I went online to get my social card to, to figure out where I needed to go to get my social card. And, um, totally let me order a new one online. That's crazy, but okay, cool. So that should be in the mail. It should get here either this week or next week. And then I can get a new license that's updated with my new address um, that says that I live in Michigan and not Kentucky. And then library card, finally, finally. And then I can read lots of random things and not just the things that I own. Not that there's anything wrong with the things that I own, but I would like to read more things. Anyway, I hope you've made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and uh, I will see you next week. Bye!